Hi everyone, I hope you enjoyed watching that video. I know a lot of you are asking how I filmed all this. And the way I did it was I got a GoPro camera with the tripod mount and I put it on our product, which is called the Mini Eye Pole. It's a stainless steel pole that extends out and then you can mount a camera on the end. And that's how I film most of my videos because it allows me to act film direct, which is the tagline for this product. The cool thing about it is when I'm underwater and I want to be filming myself or getting off the boat, it's very easy to do just like this. And then if I reverse it around like this, I can get right in close to a fish. I just got back from Indonesia and if you're watching this video you probably saw some of the videotapes that I shot and they're really pretty cool what you could do with the GoPro camera in conjunction with the mini eye pole. This happens to be our product from FastCap and this is a pole that allows you to put the GoPro camera on the end of it and allows you to hold the camera way out in front of you and then also go into the water when you're diving and then come up out of the water and flip the camera around, which I'll show you all that in just a minute. But before I do that, I want to show you how I first started out. So when I got the opportunity to go to Indonesia on a liveaboard dive ship, I thought, man, I want to make sure I record this. So I thought the most obvious way to do this is to actually put the camera onto my dive mask so my hands would be free. And the way I did that, I want to show you how I did the whole thing, and now this camera is very adjustable as you can see this. I kind of Mickey Mouse did a little bit, but it worked actually great in terms of how secure it was. So I'll pull this off real quick and I'll show you what I did. I went and took a mount, one of the mounts from the GoPro system, and just ground it down and then put a zip tie, actually my wife came up with this idea, I just used a black zip tie and between this rubber housing right here, there's actually a hole. So I was able to zip tie with two black zip ties this part onto the mask and then I used a UV cure glue, you can kind of see it globbed on there, you can use silicone, whatever you want, to kind of make sure that the zip ties would never come loose and, and I just made a little bit more stable. You could also use five minute epoxy. But at the end of the day, this worked really well. It was very secure and you can see that then all I did was take the GoPro camera and there's your part on the bottom for mounting. Is the GoPro camera has uh, these little knobs that actually tighten it on and this one would hit on the mask so I put this in a drill right here and then ground this knob off so that it would have the appropriate clearance. And I'm going to show you what that And you can see that now I'm able to spin it and get it between here and there. Otherwise, it was kind of clunking on there and it was not very clean. So I went ahead for the first couple dives and used the mask and the GoPro combination. And what's nice about this is my hands were free. The first problem I had with doing it is when I hit the water, but you don't have this tight enough, I noticed that my first couple videos were at a little bit more of an angle. They were about like that. And so whatever my eyes were looking at, the camera was looking slightly down. So if you do this method, it's best to make sure that the camera is pretty tight, parallel with the lens, if you will, of your mask. So that system worked well. I was hands free, I did hours worth of diving, and there was no problem. But I really didn't like the picture I was getting because with the GoPro camera, it's a fisheye lens. And you really can't see detail up close at all with this. So in order to see the fish and the beauty and all the things you saw in the Dive Indonesia uh, videos that I did, I had to get this camera much closer to the fish. Well, the fish didn't want to be that close to me, but I could get within four feet of the fish generally pretty easily. So that's when I said, well, I'm going to go and use the eye pole system and I'm going to show you how that works right now. Okay, so with the GoPro system, there is something called the tripod mount. It has a quarter 20 thread pattern on the top and then it allows you to mount on the bracket. So you have to buy this little uh, tripod mount and then I took the tripod mount and put it on FastCap's mini eye pole and this is again our product. So then that screws onto there like that. So now you can see what this looks like. See that right there? You can see how that works. Then I took the GoPro camera right here and then you just put it onto there and now I can use their normal knob which is right here because there's no interference problems. 
and I put that on. And now I've got the GoPro camera mounted on our mini iPole, which is stainless steel and worked absolutely awesome, you saw. So when I entered the water, I had the camera out in front of me like this, so I got a nice shot. Then as soon as I got in the water, it was time to look at fish. So I immediately just found that I could flip the camera around like this, and now the camera was facing towards the fish. And I was able to get some very cool video. As you saw, it was by a herd of 100 pound bump head fish, which was really unprecedented. You could never get that close to them, but there was no problem with this system. So that's what I want to show you in this video, how easy the mini eye pole works. Now, when I didn't want to shoot video, I simply turned the camera off, and sometimes I'd stick it in my wetsuit like that, and I could swim around, and I'd see something I wanted, I'd pull it out really quickly, adjust it, pull it out, push the button to start filming, and away you go. The next trick is, on the GoPro camera, I haven't got it set to this mode now, but when you're diving at night, in some of our videos we did night diving, it was just awesome, it's very difficult to see whether or not the camera is on for sure, and it's got a red little light here, and you can go through the parameters and set the camera up so the light blinks when it's on and that allows you to know for sure that you're filming because one of the worst things you could do is think you're filming and then find out that you're not filming and then you got a real problem. So I recommend at night mode put the red flasher on. Now the next thing I want to tell you is the sound, and it's pretty obvious, is not very good on the GoPro camera when you have the full waterproof housing back on. Now, I'm going to show you how the GoPro camera is set up because I didn't understand all these things until I got it, and I just want to save everyone some time by understanding what's going on. So I'll review the, the housing next. So the GoPro camera comes with a little latch that opens up in the back, and then the camera comes out, and this is your waterproof housing. Now, this is a waterproof lid. It has a little rubber pad on the back which holds the camera securely. But if you just take this and pull out on it just like that, this back cover snaps off and then you can put on the sound cover. And notice the sound cover has a hole going through it and that allows the sound to get in it. So when you're filming above the water, if you will, you want to put on the sound cover and it's very easy to put this on. The lid just clips right on, right there and then it closes and now you've got the ability for sound to get into the microphone and the microphone is mounted right here on the side. Now, a couple other things I want to tell you about. I also bought the extra battery pack which is right here and it has a little button on it that you can press and it tells you whether or not the battery is charged. In this case I only have one dot so it needs to be three dots to be fully charged and the way I used it all the time is I just popped that little battery pack off the back just like that and replaced the battery that was in the back of the GoPro camera. You just pop that off and then you can grab hold of that battery and switch it out just like this. Now one thing to note, it's a little thing, you'll figure it out really quick. The two covers, they look identical, but one has all the settings on the back of this one. This is a camera housing, and this one's a battery housing. They are not interchangeable. They look like they would be, but they're not. Then the second battery pack goes on very easily. It has a little joint there that you slip in like this, and then you push it together, and now you have it a GoPro that's much thicker, or you know, a little bit thicker, at least a good quarter thicker. And the problem with that is you can do it and then it drains this battery first and then drains the other battery, at least that's what I read in the directions. Now, the only problem with this is it does not fit into the standard housing anymore. So when you put that on there, like this, you can see it's too big. 
So then they make another housing that is specifically for having the piggyback battery pack on the back and you just put that off, you pull it off. But the reason why I didn't like that is now the camera gets a little bulky and I think one of the nice things about the GoPro is how thin it is. So I found that it was easier just to change the battery out rather than piggyback it on because I didn't want the bulk. Okay. So another thing I want to point out is I find the screen a little difficult to read and interpret everything. So I went and bought the little video screen right here and it goes on, it's the same size as the battery pack and it goes on the exact same way. It clips on to the back like that and then just clips on the front and presses in and then when you push the button on the side here, the screen will come on and I've got the little protective screen cover. I didn't take that off. You can see I'm in the setting mode now and I want to enter the setting mode. So I'll go like that and then I can scroll through all the different modes and as you can see, it's very easy to interpret what that's saying as opposed to trying to figure out what LFO means on the front. You can see very clearly what that means. It means voice live feed. So in my opinion, I like the color viewfinder, not because you're going to use it when you're filming, but primarily because when you're setting up the camera and changing settings, it's very easy to interpret everything. And then when you want to take it off, you just pop it off like that and you're done and you put it back at the housing. So hopefully these things have helped you understand how to use a GoPro camera in a scuba diving situation. So one of the other problems I had when I was scuba diving and I came up out of the water is I was getting water spots on the lens and I was filming and thinking I was getting good videotape, but there's always a water droplet right in the middle of the viewfinder and you can see that in some of my videos. I just had to use the footage because I needed it, but a lot of footage I didn't use and I really wanted to because it was just so bad and so blurry. So I'm going to do a little test right now and you're going to see uh, the results of that test and we'll find out whether or not putting Rain-X on the lens actually helps anything. So let's do that. So I think using Rain-X on the lens could be helpful to avoid getting a water drop on the lens and then ruining some potentially good videotape. And as you can see, it's a very cool product, very compact, and in conjunction with the mini eye pole, you can get some great underwater footage. So I hope this video helps.